Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter saw the astonishment of those who had seen the lame man healed, he addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. While the disciples were telling how they had seen Jesus risen from the dead, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Have you heard the good news? I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is really good to be back at Grace with you all this Sunday. I bring you greetings from the land of the Blue Devils, as painful as that is for me to say. I bring you greetings and thanks from the Anglican Episcopal House of Studies there at Duke and from my, my other dean, the Reverend uh, Timothy Kimbrough, who joined you all for the Kirken of the Tartan. And uh, in chatting with him, it sounds like you all gave him a warm and loud welcome. So par for the course around here. And uh, truly, I'm, I'm just really thankful for this new relationship between the Divinity School and Grace. And so because of the, the time that I spent here and now at school, I spend a lot of time around priests. And when you hang around them long enough, some of their sayings and refrains kind of permeate you, whether you like it or not. And one of Michael's that ended up, unfortunately, being very formative for me uh, was when the Lord calls, there is only one answer. And I've also found that when Father Michael calls you to come preach, there is also only <laughs> one answer. So here I am. I hope you all heard that little preface that I gave. Have you heard the good news? Preaching, I believe, can and should do many things at different times. However, it should consistently preach the good news of Jesus Christ at all times. And I think that's a very easy thing to do at this time in our liturgical year. Just two weeks ago, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord. We proclaimed our alleluias once again after the silence and contemplation of Lent. Maddie and I took a friend back home to our church. Uh, she's not of the Episcopal tradition. It was her first time at a service for Easter. And afterwards, we said, well, what'd you think? She said, y'all really like saying alleluia, don't you? <laughs> it's like, absolutely. We're fired up. But in the Easter season, it's, it's so clear. The music is rich with new life. At Grace, there's more flowers than we know what to do with. 
the truth is so clear all around us that Christ is risen. It's clear in scripture, it's clear in the building, it's clear in music. But still, the human condition prevails and just like the disciples in today's gospel reading, we have a very, very hard time believing and living into this truth of a risen Lord. Today's gospel reading comes from Luke, and it's right on the heels of a story that often gets read on this Sunday and other cycles of our liturgical year. It's a story about Jesus encountering two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Some might be familiar with it. These disciples encounter Jesus, but they can't see that it's the Messiah. But he walks with them and he talks with them down this road, and in time he sits with them and he eats with them, and it's revealed. They can see that it's Jesus. Then those two disciples rush to Jerusalem, a journey of some 20 miles according to modern maps, but it's because they have to get there. They have to tell these other disciples what it is that they saw. And that's where we pick up today. The gospel starts right in the middle of a verse today. While they're talking amongst themselves, letting their minds go in a million different directions, I'm sure Jesus appears to them in the closed room. And he says to them, peace, peace be with you. Jesus' first greeting is peace. What do the disciples do in response? They're terrified, we read. That's the word that's used, terrified. And I like to read this story maybe in the light of a story that's coming in Mark's gospel that'll come in Pentecost season for us that might be familiar to some as well. Jesus and the disciples are out on a boat after a long day of ministry. And suddenly a great storm comes up over the boat. And again, the same word is used in Scripture. The disciples are terrified. So they run to wake Jesus. They say, help us, help us. And Jesus calmly awakes, answers them, and he says to the storm, peace, be still. Mark 4.39. And we're told that the storm immediately stops at the word peace. And the disciples are amazed. But this fear of the disciples, the uncertainty, and this peace of Christ is a pretty consistent theme through the Gospels, and one that I see myself in. It's interesting to think about how those disciples who got to see everything firsthand, they were there. They were with Jesus. They saw the miracles. But yet they live in so much fear and uncertainty, both in that story from Mark on the boat, and in today's gospel. And I think it's funny that also between those two stories, Jesus asked them after he calms them, why are you afraid? Why? And today we see that Jesus shows them his hands and his feet, and then once they see, they believe. And that hits very close to home for me. And this all leaves me kind of thinking about how I really am a lot like those disciples and their fear and uncertainty. I am literally and metaphorically surrounded with the truth that Christ is risen. I hear people shout hallelujah. I hear this wonderful music. I smell flowers. This building is bright. But still, I have such a hard time believing and living into it, even though it's all around me. These past six, eight months that I've been away, have, I've had a hard time believing. Is this really right, God? Did the Commission on Ministry and Bishop make a grave mistake by sending me? Even though I'm surrounded by it and living into it each day, I think it's worth admitting that fear and uncertainty abounds in the midst of it. But in the midst of that doubt, and the fear and the uncertainty that those disciples and I still share today, Jesus does step in. And he offers a word, and it's a very clear word. It is peace. Peace be with you. When we come to the peace in our service a little later today, I invite you all just to pause for a moment and consider what it is that we're doing. In addition to it being a nice time to stretch your legs, Think about what it is that you're doing with one another. People are shaking hands. 
I always like watching parents kiss their begrudging children. <laughs> People are doing this across the aisle. Even though, you know, it's, it's done in 30 seconds, it's a great part of the liturgy. It's a joyful part. It's, dare I say, a peaceful part of the liturgy. And consider how in our liturgy, this peace encounters us before we come to this altar rail. It's a peace that you and I both need. It draws us in, and it is there in spite of and in the midst of our doubts. And I think that's a useful frame, perhaps, with which to consider this peace that Christ alone brings. Brought to the disciples on a boat, brought to the disciples in a closed room, and brought to a church in Charleston, South Carolina today. Jesus' peace, we read in Philippians 4, 7, and you often hear it in this service, is a peace which surpasses all understanding and will guard your hearts and mind. It's a peace offered by the same one who even the wind listens to and stops at a word. When I was working here for five years with the young people, one of my refrains that many of them probably got sick of was to not let the greatness, the majesty of God get lost in their day-to-day -day lives, because that is dangerously easy to do, especially with the nice, soft lives many of us live. I would say, guys, we serve a big, big God over and over again. And I find that to be true even after I've left this place. And so if this God is, if He is great enough to bring life and to calm storms with a word, is He not also great enough to step into your fear and uncertainty? I think so. And if He is the same God who can rise from the dead and appear to the disciples in a closed room, would it be possible that He has the power to meet you where you are and speak peace into your life? I really think so. There's two disciples that we read about earlier who rushed to tell the other ones about what they'd seen in Jesus. Do you recall how it was that they came to realize it was Jesus who was with them all along? Luke writes, he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. And that is still true today. Jesus meets us here at his table every single Sunday when you come to it joyfully and when you barely make it. He meets you there. He nourishes us. He sustains us. And then the best part is he sends us right back out. He commissions us, as it does at the end of today's gospel, to go out and bear witness to the truth that he is risen and to proclaim his name to all nations. In seasons of the flowers and life like we're in right now, and in seasons of the darkness and fear that come up quite often as well, this is true. Christ is with us, Christ is for us, and Grace Church, that is very, very good news. Amen.
gathered as the body of Christ in the world, let us pray for the needs of all peoples everywhere, saying, Hear us, gracious God. For the unity of all, for Ruth, our bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for all who minister in Christ, and for the holy people of God, let us pray. For the Holy Church in every place, for, Fa for St. John's Episcopal Church on John's Island, and the Anglican Church of Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia, let us pray. For all who are preparing for confirmation, reception, or reaffirmation, let us pray. For the world and its leaders, our nation and its people, let us pray. For all those serving at home or overseas in the military, mission or outreach work. For Sam, Dennis, Henry, Brian, Keen, Maxim, Louisa, Edward, Justin, Andrew, Brad, Jake, Maxwell, Drew, Legree, Kurt, Thomas, Henry, Griffin, Will, Bust, Trevor, Matthew, Christian, and Jack, let us pray. For the students, teachers, and staff at C.E. Williams Middle School, Ashley Hall, and all places of learning, let us pray. In thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, for the marriage of Catherine Grace Riggs and Grayson Ogier Barnwell, let us pray. For ourselves, our families, and those we love, let us pray. For all those in danger and need, the oppressed, the suffering, and all who are ill or troubled. For Karen, Michael, Betty, Andy, Rob, Rhett, Malachi, Maya, Penny, Antonia, Chris, Mary, Terry, Martha Ann, Chris, Jimmy, Lynn, Bob, Tyler, and Brad, let us pray. For those who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, for Kathy Leach, Susan Garmier, Tony Von Kolnitz, Michael Parham, Kenneth Hutchison, and William Joseph Allen, Jr., let us pray. Transforming God, lead us in all our efforts as we seek the renewal of this holy place. By the power of your Holy Spirit, transform our life, empower our work, and enrich our capacity to serve. As we have known your desire to save, may we also know your power to transform. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Welcome to Great Church Cathedral. Whether you're watching online or present in the cathedral, we hope those of you present in the cathedral will make it to Hanahan Hall after our service for a time of refreshment and fellowship together. A uh, couple things to note. Um, I think Nick Coleman is exactly where he needs to be. Would you agree? Thrilled that you found, you and Nick and uh, Maddie have found their home uh, in that place up there, which I won't mention, 
I'll call it Metropolitan Chapel Hill. Does that sound better? Okay, good. And uh, we promise that you don't have to wear any darker blue stoles. If we come for Advent, we'll make sure you have a lighter blue stole. But thank you, Nick, for being here and returning home, as you will be doing in the next few years as well, on a regular basis. We're, we're looking forward to that. Uh, from this Nicholas to Canon Nicholas to welcome our musical guests. Great delight this morning to welcome musical guests from the Cathedral of St. Philip in Atlanta. Uh, we're pleased to be joined by the Cathedral Choristers um, and their director, Dr. Caroline Robinson. And uh, we've been able this weekend to have a great time of music and fellowship and just to be able to meet other young leaders in worship and to be able to present pieces that otherwise we perhaps couldn't do on our own, such as Perry's great coronation anthem, I was glad. Um, and please do stick around for to, uh, the postlude to hear Dr. Robinson, who will grace us with uh, some Vidor organ music after the service. But uh, a very warm welcome. I think the appropriate offertory sentence will come in a little bit. But first of all, I need the children up here, please. Come on up. Have a seat. Well, we're thrilled that our, our good friend Nick Coleman has made it back from seminary where he's. Hi! Oh! Hello, Father Mago! Oh, Hello, uh, almost, geez. Father Nick! How are you? I'm doing great. It's good to have you with us. I was about to say, come, come up close. Can we hear you? I hope so. Is it on? Can you hear me? Sorry. We now? sent him to seminary to learn to preach, not run a microphone. It's literally my first time before. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. Well, it's great to have you with us. Yeah. Yes. So where are you now? So I'm at a very scary place called Durham, North Carolina. Hey! It's, it, there, there's devils there, actually. I've heard. But thankfully, there's a place just down the road. We call it the southern part of heaven. It's Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Ah, there you go. So whenever I feel hungry, I can always go down there and be hungry. And, and as I always say to my friends from Chapel Hill, do you, do you really want Chapel Hill? Wouldn't you prefer a hill with a chapel? Mm. But we won't go there. The message that Nick was yes. sharing with us is all about Easter. And it's, we forget sometimes that... Sometimes we think that Easter is about celebrating only something that happened a long time ago. We do remember what happened a long time ago. Yes. But the whole point of Easter is not that we look back 2,000 years and say, look at what Jesus was doing back then. The whole idea is we look about how that same Jesus is alive with mm -hmm. us today ah. and doing all the things that we can do with him. And, 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 and Nick said... Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. We're about yes. to break the bread. Yes. Jesus is with us, not as a history lesson, but Jesus is walking with us mm -hmm. every day of our lives, encouraging us, uh, yeah, helping us. Yeah, you can't us. walk with Jesus if you're looking backwards, Father Mako. Oh. What was that? You can't, you can't walk backwards. with Jesus if you're just looking backwards. That's true. I'll show you what it looks like. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Where'd that come from? I, you know what? We can't argue with that. Exactly. And so, uh, do you have a word to say about Jesus meeting us today? I do, and I think it's interesting because you guys are still in school, right? Anybody in school? That's all I'm doing right now is school, just with probably a little bit more reading and writing, but it's, it's school at the end of the day. And I go to school with a lot of different kinds of people. It's not just Episcopal people. There's Methodist people, there's Baptist people, there's Presbyterian people, and we all have to get along. Yes. And one of the ways we do that is every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, whether we like it or not, we go to the table together. We all sure. do church together. So that's why I wanted y'all to think about this breaking bread thing, because usually it's when you sit down and eat with people, you can really get to know him. So 
Maybe I can do that at school, and maybe y'all can do that at school. That's what I try to do. That's a great. I a, like that. I think mean, sharing a meal. I mean, what's better, a nice leg of lamb and there it is. Ah! I mean, that's a lovely thing to share. That's oh, right. sorry, I forgot where I was. Oh my okay. goodness. Yes. <laughs> sharing a meal. Sharing a meal. Jesus is with us, and that's why we, we we hear when two or three are gathered together. He's there. He's there. That's right. That's why sometimes we've talked about like in Advent, leaving a chair empty. At, at home because, you know, that's for Jesus when he comes. Yes. Jesus, so we're not remembering only what happened a long time ago. God is working in our lives right every now. day. Just as Nick is growing in his life and, and ministry, uh, every day Jesus is helping him along that road. Yes. And we're just glad Jesus brought you to this pulpit. Back here, yes. Right. At Grace. Yes. So what's your last word for us today, Bartholomew? This all reminds me of a, of a, a famous saying. What's the famous saying? Yesterday is history. Amen. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Amen. That's Amen. profound. Amen. He gets the last word. Amen. Amen. Let's find our way back to our families. And the sentence uh, for offertory, I would say, is, I was glad when they said unto me, we will go into the house of the Lord. He is magic. He is magic.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who is sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again, he is one for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. the risen Christ. 